Hello, Math Studies students, and welcome to another online lesson. Today we are going to be continuing our unit on financial mathematics, specifically talking about using technology to solve problems involving compound interest. We'll be using a formula on the TI calculators known as the TVM solver. It's built into all TI-83 and TI-84 uh, graphing calculators, so make sure you have your calculator out while you watch this video and follow along will be of great help to you. So, TVM solver. If you, um, TVM stands for time value money. And the way you get to it on the TI calculator is if you go to your apps menu, which is in your second column, about the four, uh, fourth one down, um, second column, like I said, apps. Finance. Even if you have all of your applications deleted, finance stays on there. It doesn't delete from the calculators. It might be the only application you have. Otherwise, it'll be the first one on the list. We hit enter there. After we hit enter, we see that our first option is TVM solver. So we can hit enter again. And then we get this menu with all these options here. Let me scroll down just a little bit so we can see this whole screen. All right. So this screen tells us what everything on our TVM solver means. If we start with big N, what I'd like to do is relate this to the formula that we had from last class, which was future value is equal to present value times 1 plus the rate. And the way the formula packet has, again, is dividing by 100 times k, which is our number of compoundings, to the k times little n, which is the number of compoundings times the number of years. Well, big N in this formula is equal to the number of compounds or compoundings, but not per year. It's total, which includes every single year. So let's say we were doing 12 compoundings per year, and we did that over two years. We wouldn't be putting 12. We'd be putting 24. So it's the number of years times the number of compounds which is what used to be our exponent, k times n. And you'll notice that I have this here uh, listed. So big N is equal to our exponent, or k times n from our old formula. I percent, this is your annual interest rate. Formerly, we had called that little r. They're the same thing, but you need to remember that I percent is written as a percent. So you do not need to move the decimal. In fact, you shouldn't move the decimal or divide by 100. You just leave it the way it was in the problem. For example, if it was 5.5%, you would actually type 5.5, not 0 0.055. All right, and then present value, obviously, that's our capital, our principal, our starting investment, the same thing it was in the formula. Uh, you'll notice here that PV should always be negative when you type it in the calculator, though, and that's weird. Um, the reason for that, well, I can't really explain why they did that in the, in the formula. I would have left it positive. But the idea behind it is if you go to a bank, and let's say we want to deposit $1,000. When you go to the bank, you should have that $1,000 with you or in a check form or something like that. And when you leave the bank, you no longer have that $1,000. You gave it to the bank. So technically, it's a loss. Now, you're going to get that back, hopefully, and you're going to get it back with interest. And that's what we're trying to figure out using this, um, this tool here. But the idea is that you're making a payment when you actually bring that money to the bank or make that initial investment or loan or whatever the case is. And so we make it negative. Um, payment. We don't need it for our class. So you'll notice here that the payment can be always left zero. It's just not needed for our class. FV is future value, which is the same as it was in the formula. It's money you have then after time. P slash Y and C slash Y, those are the same for our class anyway. You should leave them the same. And if you type something into P slash Y, it'll automatically update C slash Y. It doesn't work the other way, though. And then we have the end option here. It should automatically be highlighted. We're going to leave it that way. We won't ever switch on those. And again, that goes with the payment, so it really doesn't matter how we have that set. Uh, last but not least, in order to get your missing value, you go to Solve. Solve is like your enter key, but instead of hitting enter or even second enter, you hit alpha and then enter. So alpha is right below the second key, and then you hit 
your enter key, which is uh, solve in the upper right corner. All right, so that's what we need to know as far as getting started. Again, things to remember, big N is equal to little k times N, or her exponent from the old formula, and PY, CY are the same. We don't need PMT. Our present value should always be negative, and solve is alpha enter. All right, so Holly invests $15,000 into an account that pays 4.25% per year, compounded monthly. How much is her investment worth after five years? If we were going to set this up the old way, we'd, we're looking for our future value after five years. It's equal to her initial investment or her capital present value of $15,000. One plus our interest rate. I would normally move the decimal, but if we leave it as 4.25 divided by 100, that's the same thing, times our number of compounds, which is 12, because it is monthly. And then we take that to the power of 12 times 5. 12 compounds times 5 years, also known as 60 compounds total. Now, when we get to the calculator, we're going to be basically putting that same information in to this formula here. So big N, that is little n times k. Little n is our number of years, 5, times our number of compounds, which is 12. And you'll notice I'm just typing the expression right in there. I could have also typed 60, because that's what it's equal to. But notice as I press enter here, it automatically turned it into a 60 anyway. Our i was our percentage rate. In the problem, it was 4.25% yearly. So I'm going to type that in as a percentage. Notice the percent sign is right there next to the I to remind us we're leaving it as a percent. You don't need to make it a decimal. Then I go down to uh, present value. Our present value is 15,000, but we need to remember to enter this in as a negative value always. Now, what happens if you don't enter it as a negative value? It won't totally mess up your answer, but it will make it negative. See how we want our answer to be positive. Um, we just make the input negative. Payment, we leave alone, keep it as zero. Future value is actually what we're looking for, so I'm going to leave that as zero for now. Don't leave it blank. It'll yell at you and make you fill something in. So just fill in whatever. It doesn't matter, but zero is fine. If you have an old answer in there because somebody else had used this calculator, that's fine. Just leave it. We'll change that in a minute. And then P slash Y, C slash Y are the same thing. We put in our uh, number of compounds per year, which is 12 in this case. Once I put in the 12, I hit enter, and you'll notice that CY automatically changed to 12 as well. I'm going to scroll back now to future value. That's the thing that I'm looking for. If I hit enter, nothing happens. It just takes me down one line. So I'm going to go back to it and hit alpha enter. And you'll notice that after investing $15,000, after five years, the future value is $18,544.53 with appropriate rounding. So that's all well and good. It, uh, it's just another way to use your um, compound interest formula without actually using the formula at all. It still involves a little bit of math, especially with the big N, but it's basically the same thing that we do on the formula. If that was all there was to it, I'm not even sure I would teach this because it's not particularly useful in that sense. But sometimes there's things that we want to find other than the future value. And we'd be left uh, doing some algebra or possibly even some logarithms or graphing to figure them out. And this will make our life a lot easier using the TGM solver. So how much does Elena need to deposit into an account to collect $50,000 at the end of three years if the account is paying 5.2% yearly compounded quarterly? Hmm. All right. So to start with... Um, we need to know big N. She's putting it in for three years, and it's being compounded quarterly. So we have to multiply those together. Little n, which is three years, times our number of compounds, which is four quarterly. So there's going to be a total of 12 compounds. Now we go to our percentage, and it's 5.2%, we can see. So I type in my 5.25, I'm sorry, 2, as a percentage, no moving of the decimals. Our present value, we don't know. It's asking us, how much do we need to deposit? So I'm going to leave that as it was. I'm not changing anything. You can put a zero there, but it doesn't matter at the moment. Then future value, uh, we want to get $50,000. So I'm going to type that in, $50,000. Payments per year is the same as compounds per year, so it's four. I hit four, enter. It automatically changes my compounds per year. Now I'm going to arrow back up to 
present value. I'm going to press alpha enter and it'll do the math for me and tell me what I would have needed as my present deposit. Now there's a negative sign. You won't put the negative sign in your answer. It's implied by deposit that this is a payment that we're making and it's 42,820 and 99 cents would be the payment that we would want to make in order to end up with 50,000 at the end of uh, three years at this rate. So that's pretty slick. That saved us a lot of time as far as algebra goes. And for many of us, um, it allows us to do the algebra that might otherwise be overly difficult. Example three, how long must Magnus invest 4,000 at 6.45% annually compounded half yearly if it is to amount to $10,000. How long is what we're looking for here? So how long is a number of years? Now this one's a little bit more tricky because remember big N is not a number of years. So we're actually gonna have to do a little bit of work even in addition to the TVM solver, but let's figure out what we know so far. So big N involves knowing the number of years and we don't know that. Again, it's asking how long. So we're gonna leave that one for now. Then we have our interest rate, which is six, 0.45%, and we have our present value, which um, is 4,000, they tell us this time. Payment, we always leave a zero. Oops, and well, I forgot to put my present value as negative, so negative 4,000. My future value, I want it to equal 10,000. And so this is a pretty common question. It's like, I, I want to reach a certain amount of money. I'm trying to save up for you know, a down payment on a house or a car, whatever the case is. And I want to know how long I need to leave this money in the bank. Um, we're doing it half yearly. So our compounds are twice a year. And I think we're ready to go. Now we're going to get big N. And the thing to remember is that big N is not the number of years. It's the number of years times the number of compounds but we can do a little algebra after we get this answer. So I press alpha, enter, and big N is 28.867. All right, well, I'm gonna write that down. 28.86, I guess I could go round it up to eight. Um, and now I wanna figure out how many years this is. I know that my original formula was big N, which is what we know, is equal to the number of compounds times the little n, which is number of years. Well, I know that my big N now is uh, almost 29. My little k was the number of compounds. Since it's half yearly, that's twice a year. And so all we need to do now is find N. So I'm going to take this whole thing and divide by 2. So 28,000, I'm sorry, 28.868. Um, Let me quit out of this. I remember this, 868, I believe it was. So we're going to divide by 2. And we get 14.43 years, so almost 14 and a half years. Last example for this video. The only variable that we haven't figured out yet is rate. So we're going to do that one, or interest. So. Iman deposits 5,000 into account that compounds interest monthly, and 2.5 years later, the account totals 6,000. What annual rate of interest was paid? So we go back to apps, finance, TVM solver. Our big N, it's 2.5 years times the number of compounds, and it's being done monthly, so times 12. Interest rate is what we don't know, so I'm going to skip that for now. Present value or the original investment was 5,000. Remember to put it in as negative. Payment is zero. Future value is 6,000. Payments and compounds per year are 12. Now I arrow back up to the rate. Press alpha enter. And the rate is 7.32%, so three significant figures, 7.32. And that's how the TVM solver works. It's got a few uh, problems you can try in the book on page 151. And until next time.